Ladies and gentlemen, this is our brand new series on this channel. It is going to be called the League of Nations. Uh, just an overall competition of the best 24 teams in the world going at it. I did a simulation prior to doing the season to just kind of see where things stand as of right now. Um, I ended up putting the United States in there because that was the team that I was kind of favoring, obviously, to play with. But uh, it didn't really feel right because they're not a top 24 team in the game or in real life right now. So um, whenever we actually do get into the swing of things, it is going to be the United States being replaced with Cote d'Ivoire to make out the top 24 list the way it should be. So uh, that's the only change that's to the lineup. Now, the reason I wanted to run this is kind of to see if everything stayed the way it is what team would be kind of on the outside looking in what team has the quality to beat spain and germany um, in this situation it, but they're they just don't have i guess the right management i would be the best way to put it so i was looking at france i was looking at italy and i was looking at argentina france and italy are my two kind of euro league teams that i've always liked to um follow france obviously a lot of players from arsenal a lot of players from all over the world that are, i've i've had a I've had an attachment to it with Benzema, Giroud, you know, you name it. I love a lot of the players in the France team. Same with Italy. There's a lot of players, obviously, the history with Italy. It's just a fun team to follow. But Argentina is the team that interested me the most. In that simulation, they ended up getting 11th place. But they have the talent to honestly win this with Messi, Aguero, Di Maria, Lamella. I mean, you name it. They have so many players at their disposal that I wanted to use. And I honestly thought if I took control of this team, I can win this competition with this squad. It's going to be a challenge. Uh, we have Rojo playing at left back, um, which is going to be a little odd. I mean, I have a left back on my reserves that I can use, but I do want to try to obviously put the best players out there as possible. Um, but our front three, Aguero, Messi, and Di Maria are going to be the starting three right now. But honestly, there's going to be a lot of changes in this lineup. I'm kind of trying to get used to it. I don't have much experience playing with this team. Obviously, I have, I have experience playing with some of these players. Um, they just play for the best, best teams in the world because this is honestly one of the best teams in the world. I think they just need the right management to take them to that next level, and I think I can do that in this series. So uh, we're going to be playing all teams twice, so there's going to be 48 total games, I guess, or 40, what, 46 games total in this series. So it's going to be fun. We'll do three games an episode, the usual format. First game here is going to be against Hungary, who was actually last in that simulation. They only had like 27 points and was like negative 58 on goal difference. So this is definitely a game that I wanted to win. Wanted to make sure we put out a good showing. It, it's, it's a good starting game for me because it gets me used to the squad, sees where my strength and weaknesses are. And immediately here, early stages into the game, like 15 minutes into the game, I, I immediately see one of my weaknesses. Now... Mascherano, I thought about playing, ended up deferring to um, the names escaping me right now. But Messi ends up, I'm sorry, not Messi, Aguero ends up running up the field on the other side and shooting it near post, giving us a beautiful goal. And this is immediately where I figured out that the keeper is not strong on this team and he was going to be the weakness. All I had to do was smash the ball at the net and I think I was going to get a goal regardless. So we managed to tie it up right there. But like I said, Mascherano is definitely the player that I need. The center back that I have back there right now who, like I said, it, it's escaping me right now, but he's not fast enough, and I need more of, an, of, of a faster um, defender to keep up with some of the attackers in this league. And he, kind of, he was getting out of position a little bit, was, which was kind of my fault, but also kind of the CPU's fault. So I'm um, definitely going to be looking at getting Mascherano into the game more often. Messi ends up giving us a 2-1 lead in this game. Again, smashing it from the right side near post, just giving us another beautiful goal because his keeper can't seem to save anything. So um, coming into the end of the first half, uh, comfortable with a 2-1 lead. Definitely wanted to put up more goals because, like I said, this is not a team that did well in the simulation. So I knew their defense was weak enough for me to go ahead and get a good goal difference to build off of because goal difference is going to mean everything in this series. Um, when you're going up against Germany and Spain as the top two of France, only like two points behind them, um, goal difference is going to be everything. We want to make sure that we can, we can score as many goals as any other team in this league, but we also want to make sure that we can get our defense as structured as possible so that we don't concede goals. Because that is my big worry in this team. 
Um, it's probably the strongest center back options that they've had in in recent future or recent history rather. Um, so I definitely think this is their best opportunity. Garay is who I was talking about. He He's a good center back, but he's not fast enough to compete with a top team. So whenever I start playing against the Germanys, the Spains, I need to make sure that I have a center back who's able to get back as fast as possible to defend um, alongside Otamendi. So definitely want to make sure that we're doing that. Here in the 75th minute, we had a decent opportunity there. Was kind of surprised that wasn't a foul, but uh, we managed to get the ball on a throw in, get the ball out to Perez, who gives the lovely through ball to Di Maria. Di Maria smashes it in the back of the net with his left foot near post again. Like I said, this keeper does not know how to cover the near post. So we managed to take a 3-1 lead at this point. And like I said, I'm comfortable. I like the team. I can see big things coming with this team. And we wanted to make sure that this was our statement game. You know, we're going up against arguably probably the probably the worst team in this league right now. We wanted to make sure we put as many goals up against them as possible. And Aguero makes sure we do that with running into the box, putting that on his right foot, body fainting a couple of players, and giving us a 4-1 lead coming to the end of this game. So this is around the 84th minute. Obviously, another goal would be nice, but I'm not too worried about it. That gives Aguero two goals already for the League of Nations, and um, it puts us in a really comfortable spot. So, um, like I said, not too worried about scoring again. Just kind of wanted to make sure we saw this game out. We didn't end up conceding again. Messi gets one more opportunity here. I just kind of make a little bit of a bad run, and he doesn't have the energy to uh, outrun any of those defenders. So... This game is going to come down to a 4-1 victory for us. Gives us a three goal difference, which is going to give us a pretty good uh, position in the league so far with a lot of the good teams also kind of playing against weaker sides early on in this. Um, it puts us in a good spot. So this episode actually is probably going to be the easiest episode that we have coming up against Hungary in this first game. And then you guys will see the next two opponents that we have. But um, it we're definitely going to have some pretty interesting episodes in the future. I believe Germany and Spain are going to be fixtures that are pretty close to each other and hopefully will give us some pretty pretty nail-biting good episodes for us to uh, have up on this channel. So um, this series, by the way, is going to be coming out on Fridays. Obviously, um, on a weekly basis, I'll have this series out because I am going to be running other series as well. We have two more new series coming up on the channel in addition to the other ones that we've been recording this week so make sure you guys stay tuned and subscribe to the channel to see everything that's going on so um second game of the league here is going to be against ecuador you know the valencias are the big name players for this team um definitely a strong team but i knew i had the talent to beat them i just kind of had a few miscues here and there i think messi definitely was it was really disappointing to see him miss that. That's like his bread and butter shot. At least it should have been. So for this game, we did end up taking out Aguero, making sure he was back at full fitness for the next game and put in uh, Tevez. Carlos Tevez, obviously same height as Aguero. Pretty similar finishing. He doesn't have the same pace, but still a strong player all the way around. So, you know, wasn't too worried about taking Aguero off in this situation. In this game though, as you guys see, Di Maria scores in the 45th minute, giving us another lead. Another near right post, right foot shot, but you know, nonetheless, Di Maria has been playing pretty well for us in these first two games, but um, the team was a lot more freeform in this game than they were in the previous game. In the previous game, I felt like we had a lot more um, control and unity in the squad. The players were stay staying where they should have been, Di Maria stayed on the left. And on the right, it, you know, um, Messi is staying, obviously, to his side. And then we have our striker up the middle. But in this game, all three players up front just kind of kept interchanging themselves. So here at the start of the second half, Di Maria pulls the ball off and should have scored a one-minute goal. But ends up hitting the post. And at this point, was kind of like the decline of... Uh, Di Maria sadly but here in the 80th minute we ended up bringing on Dybala like five minutes before this and his pace is just able to run down that wing ends up cutting on the inside getting a lovely through ball and just runs it in 
Uh, beautiful finish. Honestly, the finish I was expecting out of Di Maria. He ends up doing a outside of the foot shot instead of a finesse that I wanted him to do, which maybe I guess ended up working out well for us. So uh, we do take a 2-0 lead into this game. And coming into the end of it, we had one more opportunity with Dybala that I honestly thought we should have taken. Um, he ends up getting on his right foot, but it was a lovely block, so we end up not getting the goal there. Our corners are obviously going to be a pretty weak point for us. We don't have many tall players in the squad. I think it's really just our defenders that have the opportunity to score. And uh, the rest of the players on the team really are just kind of there for the rebound if we can get it. So just st still a strong showing, obviously 2-0 victory giving us an overall five goal difference at, at this point. So um, all the team, I think there's still five teams that haven't lost a game at this point. Obviously Germany, Spain being up there, I'm pretty sure. Just kind of looking at the results here, Italy ended up beating Mexico 3-0, so big victory there for them. Uruguay beat Wales 2-0, so that's also another team I actually thought about going after was um, Wales. Uh, just didn't see enough strength there to actually compete for a top two position or winning the league so like I said I figured Argentina was probably going to be our best bet but third and final game of the episode here is going against going against Romania another team that's probably going to end up closer to the bottom of the table at uh, when all things are said and done still a decent team nonetheless so we wanted to make sure we put out a good squad at this point the majority of my players were at full uh, full strength and full fitness so um, that is going to be kind of the difficulty when recording this series. If you guys didn't watch my um, League of Champions season that I did with Arsenal, um, it, the only difficulty with this series is that you play two games a week every week. So, um, But luckily, usually whenever you play on Wednesday and you get that Sunday match, it's enough of a difference where uh, your fitness ends up fixing itself by the next week. So it's not too bad. We concede another early goal here in the 8th minute of this game. Just really bad defending on my part. I ended up pulling a defender off of him and he was just able to turn and burn me and uh, just ended up getting an early goal. So um, This game felt a little weird for me. They were pressuring me, but then like the second I got the ball on their half, as you guys are going to see in this game, they had every defender back. They were parking the bus as hard as possible, which is understandable. You're talking Romania against Argentina. so. Uh, Leo Messi ends up getting the ball in the box, just turns and just launches it with his left foot, giving us a 1-1 draw at this point. So um, this was definitely a fun game to play, a kind of difficult game to play, and it was good to have a challenge, especially from a team that I really wasn't expecting a challenge from. Um, I think I could have put out a slightly better lineup here. I wasn't really sure how I wanted to play this. In the central midfield, playing with Pastore, I'm still trying to figure out if he's my best option or if I should be playing with Dominguez or uh, there's there's a couple options for me there. And like I said, Lamella is probably going to get in the squad in the next few episodes as well in that center attacking mid position. And I may also push my midfielders up because as of right now, you're playing in that 4-3-3 holding with two central uh, defensive midfielders and that one central midfielder. So. Uh, it's it's a little difficult for me to adjust to because I am more um, used to playing in that 4-3-3 either um, a 4-3-3 attacking or a 4-3-3 holding is more so where I'm comfortable at. Here, Pastore, I ended up making a dumb tackle. I, I was honestly just getting frustrated because this is a very fast team. Romania has a lot of pace on every position in, on the pitch and it's kind of hard to keep keep a hold of in this game so I was I kept losing the ball and none of my defenders could get back so I ended up with Pastore there and just pulled him down and then wasn't really able to pull him down so I just slide tackled thinking I could maybe get my legs around him and get to the ball but ends up taking him out through the back of his legs so um, like I said this this was a difficult game all the way around Romania put up a good fight so my initial thought was you know maybe they're gonna end up bottom of the table but this is a team that I think could probably shock a lot of teams in this league and could maybe even end up in the mid table area so it's gonna be interesting seeing how some of these teams play out um, there's a lot obviously a lot of talent when you're talking about international teams the talent is spread out um, all, all over the world so um, Mexico started well I think in their first game Chicharito had two goals so you know he was imme immediately on level with Aguero but then they ended up losing 3-0 in their next game but 
Um, this game is going to come to a close at a 1-1 draw. They get one more opportunity here late, and I honestly thought I was going to concede. I got really lucky with a beautiful state save from Ruli. Uh, just a, a great keeper, a great youth keeper, and a great career mode keeper if you guys are ever looking for one. He's a bit expensive, obviously, because he is already at 79 rated, but definitely a very, very strong keeper if you guys are ever in the market for one. But that is going to have this episode come to a close. I'll show you guys how the table is coming to right now because we are on seven points at this point because unluckily we did not win all three games of the episode so germany is at top of the league with a three goal difference nine points argentina spain and italy all have a five goal difference tied at seven points it's a very close league and it's going to be a fun series all the way around so if you guys did enjoy the episode make sure you like comment and subscribe and until the next one i'll see you guys later